OK, get your pens and your highlighters ready and let's check out how to approach paper one, question four. The first thing you need to do is underline which part of the text you're answering the question from. Believe it or not, many students answer from the wrong part. Then you want to go to the actual text and mark it on there so that you simply can't make a mistake. So there you go. I know that I'm starting at line 34. Now I'm going to go through the question and work out what it is the examiner's after. Now normally the question's divided into two parts and I'll show you those two parts here. Number one, how cruel Hartop is, that's Alice's father, and number two, how much sympathy we have with Alice. As I say, question four will always be in two parts. Next, you'll see me reminding myself that I've got to use the word however in my answer. And the easiest way to do that is to force myself to write a partial disagreement with the question. So you'll see me in my answer use however quite frequently, and that's because the second bullet point always begins with the word evaluate. Evaluate's also in the mark scheme. So this is the only way I can see that you will safely show the examiner you're evaluating. You're basically saying, yeah, I mostly agree, but however this. Every time you use that word however, you're evaluating, and consequently the examiner has to see that you've answered the question fully. Now, the other thing that the mark scheme really likes is an overall summary, like a sentence at the beginning that summarises your view about the text. Now, that's why I'm writing here, leave two lines to put in your opening statement, which will be a summary. Why not do it at the start? Well, because at the start, I might not know what my summary is. I'm only going to work that out when I answer the whole question. The final bit I'm making a note on here is that could is the wrong word. It is must. I have to include those two bullet points in order to have a chance of getting a top grade. Now I'm going to write down my acronym VASE, V-A-S-E. These are the four things I'm going to focus on. Now, the reason I've done that is I could comment about absolutely anything, and dozens of things could turn up in any exam paper, but VARS helps me work out what are the precise things that will turn up. And so I know V stands for the verbs that the writer uses, A stands for alliteration, and I've added into that sibilance because it's a type of alliteration. Then S stands for simile, but actually I'm going to link all those figurative use of language together, so metaphor and personification go with simile. And then finally, every writer thinks about emotive language. So I know that if I write about those four things, verbs, alliteration, simile, emotive language, and the ones listed by it, I will get top marks. But even better than that, I know that every single text that I come across in any exam will have those four things in them, so I'll always be able to get top marks focusing on them. Now, at the top of my extract, or the part that I'm looking at, I'm going to write down the things that I have to focus on in the question so that I can't possibly get this wrong. So this is the cruelty of Hartop and the sympathy for Alice. Now I've anchored my thinking, and every time I can find something relevant to that, I'm going to highlight it in yellow in the passage. So he shouted at her, which also shows that he's cruel to her. He's also leaned across his wife to do it, which suggests that perhaps his cruelty is caused by a dislike of women. Next, she, the mother, is protesting, which suggests that she definitely thinks that Hartop's being cruel. He tells her you'll catch up, which shows at least indifference, and given the weather that we're going to uncover, it's also cruel. Next, we find out that the car moves away from her very rapidly, giving us this feeling of abandonment. When we read the description of the rain, we can see it smashes her full in the face due to the force of the wind. These descriptions obviously make us feel sympathetic, but then we look at how she reacts without hurrying, and we realise that maybe she doesn't need our sympathy. 
She seems to accept what's going on, and in fact that word is repeated to emphasise that her cruelty doesn't really... Sorry, his cruelty doesn't really matter. She reacts quite stoically. Now, you might not know what that means, so I'm going to leave that out of my answer. Okay, now I've spotted a simile as though she had a long journey before her, and I sense that this is being used in a metaphorical sense. It's symbolic, as is the next phrase, that she could see nothing. So I could use that to show that she deserves our sympathy, or to argue that she's got plans of escape, and that's what this metaphorical writing's all about. Next, I notice that she stumbled, which I can use to show that we're getting sympathetic towards her, and I've suddenly remembered, oh yes, I'm supposed to be focusing on verbs. Then I've got a symbolic use of the red tail light here, which often suggests danger symbolically, so I might write about that. And we've got the idea of the rain being recurrent, got some alliteration going on, and that's also a metaphor, isn't it, where her lashes transforming the lights of the houses into sudden stars. So I know, as it's a metaphor, I've got to write about that. It feels like a hopeful image, so I'm probably going to link that to a however. In other words, that diminishes our sympathy because she appears happy about this, or at least her experience appears better. Now I notice that the verbs become urgent, the repetition of go, 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 and that conveys again his cruelty, which is emphasised by move yourself. Then Alice obeyed at once, which shows that she feels oppressed. Next, I notice the use of this word vanished, which suggests that she's being erased by her father's cruelty, and she's even been robbed of a voice. She goes away without speaking a word, so it feels like her identity has been attacked by her father. Now, in the real exam, I'm not going to annotate for quite so many things, and here I'm going to be selective in the ones that I use. I'm going to select them by using vars, because that's going to frame my answer. So, here I go, remembering to keep the first two lines free. Alice's father seems to be dismissive of women, as we see when he leaned across his wife to shout at Alice. He is even more cruel to Alice, so he shouted at her. Even in bad weather, this seems unnecessary. Notice how I'm integrating my quotations. I now go back to tick off the quotations that I've already used and find the next couple I'm going to write about. Her mother also thinks this is cruel, which is why she tried to protest against sending Alice out in the rain. However, notice that word again to show I'm evaluating, Hartop ignores her words just as he silences Alice. So hopefully I'll remember to put that quotation in when I write about the ending. Now I check back for the next couple of quotations to use. We can see that this sense of cruelty is conveyed by the verbs. We see this throughout the passage, where Hartop yells at her again when she has caught up. Go on! Go on! Go! This repetition emphasises that he's impatient with her and doesn't care that Alice might be tired and wet after walking alone in the rain. Now I go back to plan my next paragraph by looking at the extract and my notes again. We get a sense that Alice may be afraid of her father, again through the use of emotive verbs. She stood mute as though afraid to speak, and when he tells her to move, Alice obeyed at once. This conveys how she appears unable to think independently, possibly through fear. Notice how I'm using tentative language like perhaps, might, possibly and probably. These words all show the examiner that I am evaluating, so they have to give me a top grade. These descriptions have all made us feel immense sympathy for Alice. 
Notice how I've kept referring to cruelty all the way through the first half of my answer, and now in the second half I'm going to focus on sympathy, so I'm meeting both bullet points. But I'm also aware I've not been following through on all the parts of Vars. I haven't written about any alliteration yet, so I go back to the passage to find some. So immediately I find the fricative al so immediately I find the fricative alliteration of full in the face. That's quite violent sounding. And then I've got some sibilance with seamed and smashed. And then I spot a second example of sibilance, which I know other students won't get, so I'm going to focus on that if I can, of seemed to accept. Notice the double C in accept is still sibilance. So can I write about them? Sibilance is always used for the same two uses, either to make something sinister or, conversely, to make it peaceful. I will decide which it is as I write my answer. And I highlighted that whole metaphor, so it's about time I wrote about that, because that's the other part of Vars that I need to include to get the top grades. The writer emphasises how miserable Alice should be in order to make us more sympathetic. The alliteration describing rain hitting her full in the face highlights the force of the rain. This fricative also creates a harsh impression. The rain is also personified as it seemed to veer with a mind of its own. However, part of our sympathy is questioned by Alice's reaction. She does not appear to feel sorry for herself. The sibilance of she seemed to accept the journey recreates a feeling of calm, as though her father's cruelty doesn't really affect her. So I'm working my way through Vars, and I'm also linking the idea of cruelty to the idea of sympathy. The writer describes her walk oddly, in a metaphorical way, as though she had a long journey Ahead, oops, before her. Perhaps this is more than a walk. It could imply her realisation that she has a long way to go in order to escape her father. Paragraph finished. Now let's go back and check what the next points are going to be for the next paragraph. This metaphorical or symbolic use of description develops towards the end. Although Alice is mute, this may not be fear, but defiance, a way to escape her father. This is emphasised at the end, where she walked away and vanished. This might show that she has been repressed by Hartop's cruelty. It might suggest that his parenting has almost robbed her of an identity. However, it could also foreshadow her eventual escape, where she will vanish and leave him behind forever. There are three things to notice here. The tentative language with might, the repetition of however to show I'm evaluating, and the continual reference back to cruelty, even though I'm writing about sympathy now. Linking those two bullet points together shows my answer has a really developed structure. Now, I may well have done enough evaluation to get full marks, but I'm taking no chances. I'm going to use my whole time limit, and I'm going back to Vars. What haven't I written about yet? This metaphor, the idea that the rain is being turned into stars. That's an image of hope, isn't it? OK, let's put that into my answer. The writer finds other metaphors to hint at Alice's power to escape. The lights of houses are transformed into sudden stars. This image of transformation invites us to imagine Alice's ability to transform her experience. Perhaps the reference to stars suggests she can transform her fate, and so escape heart ops treatment. The sibilance of sudden also implies that this transformation is powerful and quick. We imagine that such an escape might happen later in the story. 
OK, it's an exam, so I'm going to go back and look at the things I wanted to put in. Remember that plan I did analysing the question at the beginning? And I'm going to check that I've got all those things in. Yes, I've included both bullet points. I've used, however, I've got a partial disagreement. But look, I've still got to do those two lines at the beginning which give a summary statement because that's what the mark scheme does. The writer describes Hartop's cruelty in order to evoke sympathy for Alice, but subtly implies Alice can rise above it. Right, that's completed my answer, but what have you learned? Time to test yourself. What have you learned about how many parts there are to the question? What sort of language you should use? Which word will force you to evaluate all the time? How do you treat the second bullet point to let the examiner know you're linking it to the first bullet point? How many paragraphs should you write at one time? What are the different elements of VARS? And how did I make sure I'd got them all in? How do you make sure you're answering from the right part of the text? If you're unsure of any of these answers, go and increase my watch time by going back to earlier parts of the video. And if you would like to learn more about the language exam, check out one of the videos appearing on... Appearing? Appearing on the left or the right. Or, if you catch any of them relieving themselves, my apologies, I'm getting old. <laughs>